Sheila, thanks for sending your questions. Um, I'm going to be doing your questions each in a separate video, so the videos aren't too long. So we're differentiating uh, an absolute value. The very first thing we're going to do is the easy stuff, which you probably already know. When you have a sum, you can differentiate term by term. So that's all I've done here. We're going to differentiate term by term. In the next step, what I've done is I factored out the negative 3 in this first uh, derivative over here. So we're going to put that out in front, and all that's left is the absolute value of x minus 4, which we'll be differentiating. And I've differentiated the constant, which just goes to 0. In the next step over here, any time we're differentiating an absolute value, we're going to rewrite that as the square root of whatever term you're differentiating squared. So rewrite the absolute value as the square root of x minus 4 squared. Be, uh, make sure to note that the square is actually underneath the square root here. That's going to make a big difference when we apply the chain rule. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the square root as a fractional exponent so that we can apply the chain rule. Make sure you have all your parentheses in order here. It can get very, very confusing. So now we're ready to apply the chain rule. So we're just going to rewrite the negative 3 out in front, and I'm going to count how many functions that uh, we have before I differentiate so I can make sure we get them all. It looks like we have one, two, three functions. So we're going to be differentiating three times. Let's go ahead and work our way from the outside to the inside. We're going to be applying the exponent rule here. So the negative 3 just stays on the outside. Uh, we're going to pull down this 1 half for our outer function. Let's go ahead and put a bracket there. And then we're going to take everything that's on the inside of that outer function and just rewrite it. So we're going to have the square root of x minus 4 squared. And we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent, so we'll have negative 1 half. Okay, let's go to our middle function here. I'm going to apply another bracket. And again, we're just applying the exponent rule, so we're going to pull down the 2, and we're going to rewrite everything that this square encompasses. So x minus 4, and we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. So that just becomes a 1. You don't have to write that, of course. But we'll do it just to make things clear. And now the inside function, just x minus 4, the derivative of x is just 1. Again, we'll just write that just to keep things clear. So in the next step, we're going to simplify. It looks like we have a 1 half and a 2, and we have a product here, so those will cancel out, which is very nice. Uh, looks like we still have that negative 3 on the outside, and we have an x minus 4 to the first, so that's going to go on top. And it looks like we have a negative exponent here, so we have something that's going to go in our denominator. It looks like we have x minus 4 squared. And negative 1 half means we have a square root on the bottom. So this is what we end up with. And once we've differentiated and simplified, we can go ahead and put everything back in terms of the absolute value. So the numerator is going to stay the same. And the square root of anything squared is the same as saying the absolute value of something. So what we really have on the bottom is the absolute value of x minus 4. And that should be your final answer. Thanks again for your question, Michaela.